Today, BRC TV investigates the distribution of light, how different designs and engineering elements help us avoid hot spots and cold spots that end in either undesirable growth patterns, coloration, and even mortalities. You'll see the distribution patterns associated with large panel lights, small lights with focused lenses, medium lights with wide lenses, small lights with wide lenses, three-point hybrids, all with very unique attributes that will change the way that you light your tank. Our test is simple. We mount the lights at the BRS recommended height for each, then take 108 PAR measurements throughout the tank, 36 measurements at 6, 12, and 18 inches deep in the tank. The result is three surface charts like these that visualize hot and cold spots. You can see the exact PAR numbers layered on top of the chart, as well as the total average PAR for the layer below. In addition, we also share how many points are above 200 par with exact locations for mixed tank lovers and how many points are above 300 par for those SPS show tanks. After testing 50 plus light sources, there are some primary takeaways that you should look out for in this data. First, the common perception that the bottom of the tank is dramatically lower in par than the top and requires punch is just not accurate. The only thing that changes is how that light is distributed. Good example of that is the narrower lens Hydra 64 versus the Radeon G6 XR30 with the ultra wide lens. The Hydra 64 uses lenses to focus light down and get that punch. Net result is the 36 point average par at the top of the tank is 264. At the bottom of the tank, that average drops to 231. A difference of just 33 par, 12% from top to bottom, which will have no material difference on the animals. In contrast, the Radeon G6 XR30 and the HEI2 lenses use the LED's already wide lens and widens the spread pattern even more. A very different approach to lighting the tank by leveraging the glass as an internal reflector, but similar result at the bottom. Average par 481 at the top and 406 at the bottom are just 15% different from top to bottom and only 3% different from the Hydra's more focused approach. Net effect is those lenses are creating a hard punch with the Hydra and a more soft diffuse punch with the XR30's HI2 lenses, but ultimately almost the same result. Second, focus lenses create hot spots at the top of the tank even when mounted at the ideal mounting height. It's just unavoidable. They do result in slightly higher PAR numbers, but is that 3% more PAR worth the hot spot? For example, this is the Hydra 32 next to the XR15 G6 Radeon mounted at their ideal heights. The Hydra's focus lenses create a significant hot spot where the Radeon is near flat. Third, shape of the light matters. Circular lights and square lights cover square areas more evenly. Rectangular areas cover rectangular areas more evenly. A good example of that is the Kessel A360, which produces a fairly predictable circular pattern from a small circular lens. However, the rectangular AP9X has a very distinct rectangular distribution pattern. The net result of two light sources with oval recessed lenses. However, with other lights where you place them matters as well. Two primes spaced evenly over the tank produces a similar rectangular or oval distribution pattern. Something that you don't see when you use four primes that creates a square or circular distribution pattern. So use today's data to consider how the individual cones of light will intersect with each other. The data and a bit of common sense application will take us a long way. For instance, is a 120 gallon rectangular tank a 48 by 24 rectangle, or is it two 24 by 24 inch squares? Or is it three 18 by 24 inch rectangles, or even four 12 by 24 inch rectangles? Once you understand the coverage area, you'll be able to select the shape and the right light for your installation. Fourth, going big doesn't always solve the distribution challenges. Lens design plays a role. For example, the ATI Stratton versus the Orphic Icon, both of which nearly cover the entire tank, but the Stratton with a lens design that's ideal for being close to the tank and the Icon which performs best when mounted higher. Wider angle options just don't have the same hot spot because of the overlapping cones of light are less focused. Fifth, three-point hybrids with fill lights can produce more even distribution than even a giant panel of T5 lights. This is the Kessel A360X flanked with Aquatic Life's T5 fill lights versus an ATI 8-bulb sun power. The cones of light from the eight T5 bulbs intersect at the center to create a distinct rectangular shape, but the three-point hybrid has a much more uniform distribution pattern because there's less light intersecting at the center. Same effect with the LED LED three-point hybrids. This is both the A360X flanked with the AI Blade fill lights as well as the XR15 G6 flanked with AI Blade fill lights. Both are more uniformly distributed than the large bank of T5s. Six, the three-point hybrids seem to work best when the fill lights are designed to work at around the same height as the primary light. 
Mixing heights means that one is mounted less optimally. Reef brights, blades, and T5s are a good option for pairing with the GHL Mitris, Kessel A360s, Radeon, Skies, Reef LEDs, which are all in that 6 to 8 inch off the tank range. But the Orphic OR3s might be a better option for modules that require higher mounting heights. Seventh, the three-point hybrids seem to produce the best results when the fill lights are about 50 to 70% the wattage or par of the primary light. This is because the fill lights are layering on top of the primary light and they don't need to be as strong to work well. Let's get to it. The par and distribution of 50 plus different lighting configurations. Quick links to each in the description. No commentary required. You'll be able to see the lesson shared today and why some options are better suited to your tank or how to fix or compensate the mistakes of the past. Pay special attention to those points over 200 and points over 300 par to get the right tool for the job with the LPS mixed or wall-to-wall -wall SPS show tank.
Okay, so where do we go from here? Six months of testing, six lighting result videos, six live discussions, more data on lighting than our hobby's ever seen all at once. That's up to you, what you ask the manufacturers for, what you recommend to others and personally buy will dictate what they make for your future tanks and for future reefers. Use all this data to demand and use the best lighting approaches out there. What's next? Flow. Time to learn more about these power heads. Just like lighting, they're not all the same and some have some surprising performance differences. See you in a couple of months when all the data starts to roll.